all, Daddy, I love you. And I'm like, oh, thanks, guys. True story, by the way. And they do not miss a beat when they tell me, Dad, we're just playing. They have little figurines, and my two daughters are playing whatever kids do with figurines. And I'm trying to decide, am, was I just insulted? Because in either game, life or football, the margin for error is so small. I mean, one half a step too late or too early, and you don't quite make it. One half second too slow, too fast, you don't quite catch it. The inches we need are everywhere around us. They're in every break of the game, every minute, every second. Leg out. up everybody can you give me a hand no I mean I'm really can you give me a hand I'm trying to lift this uh, battery into my trailer I just bought I went camping as everybody knows um, everybody that listens um, okay as as you know um, you will know when I start getting a few more listeners. I do okay, um, but again, this is more for my um, doing my reps. Uh, and, but I, I, I try to picture. Okay, who, who do I do this for? If I was to have, because you got to picture your audience. And anytime you're going to market, you you need to like a laser beam look at, okay, who am I marketing this to? If it's a lady, you got to picture what she's wearing, her age, does she have kids, what she just, the more information, the better. And then the better you could be, um, what do they say, a light bulb, if it's 100 watts and it illuminates the whole room, sure, it's it's illuminates, people see it, but a laser, if it's pointed at one single direction, that'll grab the attention of whoever that is pointed at. So what I do is... Um, I tell myself, okay, there's, I guess to, to not bury the lead, it would be, let, let's say you have somebody in the uh, a minority community, bad area that doesn't have uh, a father figure and they don't hear a lot of rules of life uh, because the rules of life aren't sexy. They're, they're, nobody makes movies out of them, really. Nobody makes sing songs about them. You always hear about, oh, uh, the... Uh, uh, Zuckerberg, you know, the, the, or, or this, this guy has a Facebook and, and, uh, you know, he got 5 million hits and now he's making a hundred thousand dollars a year off, off just, you know, making stupid sound effects and stupid toys, um, for stupid kids that say they love you and then find out they're not talking to you. The, the, the problem I have with that is a lot of these guys, sure, they're, some of them are, are motivational speakers and everything else. And, and that's all good because we all want to chew the fruit and spit out the seeds, you know, with the information in our life. But the problem is some of these people's brains are so good that they, you could put them anywhere and they will strike gold. And, you know, what, what works for them may not work for us. Like, for instance, um, if you were to listen to, let's say, you take a host of a, sh- a morning show and he's like, oh, I do this and I do that. Well, you try to do this and that to make, you know, 30 million a year, but you can't unless you have that voice that that guy has or that experience. So, you know, it, it for one thing, we have to accept, okay, we, we all have limitations. You know, if, um, what is it? If Magic Johnson, he could try as hard as he wants, but he'll never be a jockey. Um, but that doesn't mean, uh, you know, you can't use his, uh, he can't use his skills to be good at something else. Um, and, you know, I'm sure he's probably, probably an okay basketball player if he just applied himself. But instead, he's doing all these other stupid things like, you know, owning the Dodgers. And come on, Magic, pull yourself together. So what I, what I try to do is I, I take my, my experience and, and let me kind of say what my uh, experience is and I I 
have ran a, a run, I run, I have ran, um, went to public school, a cleaning company for pretty much my whole life. And uh, since I was 17, um, and even before that, I had a work history, but basically, I just work. Um, and what's interesting is I don't, I was, it wasn't easy for me. Um, I had a lot of health problems when I was younger and I didn't have the energy that a lot of people had, but I didn't know, or at least I didn't equate the two, which is glad. I'm glad because otherwise I may have, because of my illness, um, especially if I was born now, I would have had an excuse to not do anything. So I put all that aside and you just had to compete. Um, you know, whatever you're doing, you know, with your friends, um, you know, even with, with health problems, uh, like uh, even in one eye, my vision is, is uh, pretty much blind in one eye. So I never really saw 3D and I didn't understand why I would just get taken to the mat when we're playing basketball or, or um, uh, racquetball, uh, pretty much anything that involved the hand and eye coordination. I didn't really put it together until later, but I'm glad because I just tried harder. I didn't have an excuse, um, or at least I had one. I just didn't use it. Uh, not that I'm a miracle worker. It's just, I just, nobody around in me, nobody around me was saying, oh, poor baby. Um, therefore, I didn't feel like a poor baby. So I'm not saying I'm better than anybody. It's just, if I was born now, maybe uh, because of the, the helicopter parenting that goes on, maybe I wouldn't be um, as hungry as, as I am now. So anyway, I, I take um, me, I'll, I'll call myself uh, very average, but you ask other people and they'll say, oh, he's, he's a hard worker, but harder than anybody I know. You know. He's got so many different things going on and blah, 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 blah. And so I'm trying to kind of convey to other people, this is how I did it. Um, it wasn't because of what the man did for me. Because it wasn't because of well, really on a spiritual level, it's nothing that I did. Because um, I could have been born in Iraq, running from ISIS, because I'm a Christian, you know. Um, so the fact that I'm here, I believe God sent me an olive branch and said, "All right, you know, pick it up and run." So that that's that's one of the reasons I do the show um, is to ultimately, uh, if you get to the root of all things, um, it's something there, there's something there, and it can be. It can be shared, and, and you know, as long as somebody's going to pick it up and run with it. But how it manifests itself is having that work ethic, um, and it's hard because when you're in a funk and you have no motivation, your your work ethic is just non-existent. But here's the trick. Here's the secret. You take, um, and I don't know Zuckerberg, uh, you know, the founder of a. a I almost said Facebook. Yeah, Facebook. I was going to say MySpace. Um, ironically, I, I didn't start Facebook because I felt like it was a dating service. And, and I was married, so I'm like, you know, I'm like, no, I'm not going to get on that stuff um, because uh, a lot of bad, you know, could come out of it. So, you know, I was high and mighty, so I, I, I rejected going on it. Because, you know, a lot of people, they'll, they'll flirt and date and you know, look up their exes and a whole host of things. Um, but unfortunately I'm also, I've always loved business and sales and everything else. So it's at a certain point I had to do it. I had to get involved with social media because, you know, it's, it's to not be involved with social media would, would be like when they're coming out with this thing called radio back in, you know, was early 1900s. I don't know. Um, that now uh, I'm like, no, no, I'm not going to advertise on radio. What would I do that for when I could just, you know, throw up a bat signal or whatever, you know, however else people would advertise, you know, on this match, uh, match boxes or, or whatever. How would people, sandwich boards, that's, a, that's one way to do it. In fact, you know, ironically now, if you did a sandwich board, Advertising, where you just walk back and forth on the street corner, you probably get a lot of um, hits, so to speak, because it pops, because nobody's doing it. Um, and the problem with social media, the way people are doing it, everybody's doing it. So they're, they're looking for, for something different. I.e., this is why I do the podcast, because obviously that's going to be a bigger player. And the 
if you don't think that information is going to change, you just look at 10 years ago, they just came out with the iPhone and look how much has changed between then and now. So what do you think is going to happen another 10 years from now? Um, I mean, it's just, you could do a whole show on that. And, you know, I talk about it every day. There's just all these new things and there's nothing um, that's going to stop the information age and the digital age and everything else. Um, So you have to get on board. But like in target practice, you have to shoot ahead of your target if you want to hit your target. Because if you're aiming at your target... Guess what? That target's moving. You know, good luck. You're, you're just going to be a little dust trail behind your target. In that, if right now the only thing you're doing is buying banner ads and the other things like that, um, you know, it's going to just be a dust cloud because no, nobody's paying attention. Um, what I do is I... Um, sh- there, there's different things, but but one of them with the, with the company is, you know, you, you, you find people that will influence other people that will blog for you. Um, and in the, the food company that, that I help run, um, that's what I do is I just reach out to not just people, but like the latest diet, it's the, the keto diet. So we reach out to them and, and then, you know, they reach out to you and then you hopefully get some free advertising and, and stuff like that. But there's, um, there's so many things going through my brain right now because I just I just happened to listen to another another podcast and this guy was talking to black his black brothers and sisters and it and I kind of forgot my target audience at the very beginning when I said okay who, who is my audience and it's and it was for um, it, it just the the guys that I used to work with. I would be the driver, they'd be the passenger, and I would just listen to them all day and I'd talk to them, and they would hear for the first time why I vote the way I do. Not that there's a right or a wrong way, it's just most people don't even know why they vote other than they're, they're told. Why I, I have the work ethic I have, how I do it, uh, some tips and tricks. And these guys were hearing this stuff for the first time. And then this guy would move on, another guy would come in, and I felt like, you know, if, if every one of these guys that works with me if I'm helping them, you know, get a good work ethic and then sending them along, you know, I feel like that's that's part of my legacy. Um, and you know, these these people, I'm sure they're lining up to to thank me later on. Um, yeah, they just don't know where I'm at, I guess. But my point is, I'm not doing it for thanks. It's just there's a need for it, and you know, whether it's just this is a couple people, um, this is one person, or eventually if if it gets promoted and and a lot of people hear this. Um, it doesn't matter because it's the information's out there, and it, if you hear it, it will sink in. And you're hearing one side of of the argument is, okay, you're in America, the man's keeping you down, there's white privilege, and all these things. Okay, that that's fine. And and what I tell um, even my brother-in-law, he's you know, black, African American, whatever we're gonna call him. I call him my brother-in-law, but you know, I guess you gotta be more specific nowadays. Um, the point is, like when we talk about police brutality and this, that, and the other, and I go, you know what? Let's say all that is true for the sake of argument. Let's say everything you say is true. The cops are out to get you. This, that, and the other. You're not gonna change it. Things are the way they are. So let's look at the the most successful people in the world. Whether it's Bill Cosby, okay, maybe not the best example, but. Um, let's say we're in a time machine two years ago talking about Bill Cosby uh, or, or any black uh, successful person. Um, and, you know, uh, Ben Carlson, you know, the, the famous neurosurgeon, um, you, you know, presidential can- candidate. Um, let's go down the list. Did they go through this the same world that we're talking about that's really bad? Yeah, they did. And guess guess how they got what they got? It wasn't from affirmative action. It wasn't from, you know, a, a grant from the government. It wasn't, it was waking up early and working your tail off, working harder than the guy to your left and to your right. And if you do that, you'll be more successful than you will if you depend on anybody else for your success. Whether you're black, white, or whatever, uh, yellow, hey, you know, and why, why are they called the yellow? I, I don't get it. They should be called white if you really think about it. Um, so you're, you're basing your, 
what you're going to do on, on how you feel. What are